part of the problem and why student loans drag on for so long, like I said, it's the one loan that we excuse. We allow it to hang around. Oh, it's okay if you can't pay this month. We'll defer it. We'll put it in forbearance, which, by the way, for those of you that are experienced with student loans, you know that when you do that, that doesn't stop the interest. So what happens is this little $5,000 loan, is maybe she needs just a little, you know, tied over till the next, you know, couple of months, and she puts it in forbearance, and pretty soon before you know it, that forbearance and deferment, if you're not careful, you have built a new lifestyle forgetting that your student loans are around. Happy Sunday evening, everyone. All right, it's hitting about almost 7.30 on the dial here. By the time I get this uploaded, it'll probably be about 8.30. If you don't see this till Monday, have a beautiful and safe Monday. All right, we're going to take a look here at a student loan story that should make all of us who've ever had student loans or have student loans or you're thinking about taking out student loans, um, then I'm talking about the balances that you cannot pay off. All right, we're gonna listen to a story about a 76 year old woman. Um, and I call that the elderly and frail stage, okay? Um, she has student loans still. So we're gonna hear her story and how she got into this situation. I can tell you my $110,000 student, student loan was paid off in 2022. I am ever so grateful. I'm beholden literally to the taxpayers for allowing me to pay it off um, after 16 years of teaching middle school. I had just decided that I would have to retire with my student loans because as a public school teacher, there was no way I could pay off an $85,000 student loan um, as a single school teacher. And then it ballooned over the 16 years that I had it to 110. So I just, my heart goes out to this woman and let's hear her story because it could be potentially any of us that take out more student loans than we can manage. And it's not because we're unintelligent, okay? It's not because we did it intentionally. It's we just didn't understand what we were doing. And by the time we understood, it was too late. So let's hear her out. Wow, Zuli, good girl, good girl. 76-year-old Yvonne Evans has been trying to pay off student loans for nursing courses she took at Southside Virginia Community College over 30 years ago. Let this sink in, people. Just inhale and exhale 30 years ago now this story ran five months ago where were you 30 years ago some of you may not have even been born yet 30 years ago just you know take a slow breath on that 30 years ago the loan gonna be here when i'm dead and gone there's no way i can pay it off i'm not working now oh stack over here let's see her original balance from 1989 was around $5,500 and has ballooned to nearly $35,000 with interest. Okay, so it's ballooned to $35,000 with interest. Now, let me think about where I was. She said the original loan for $5,000, she took it out in 1989. In 1989, that was the year I graduated from the University of Oregon at the age of 21. I am now 57. So I was 21 when she took this loan out for 5000 Now remember, it may be easiest for, say, $5,000. I mean, why does that seem so hard? Well, I guess I could ask myself the same thing. Why did 85000 seem so hard? I had 16 years to pay it off, and I still could not. Because you have to think in terms of the income at that time and what her you know, living situation was at that time. You also have to remember this, family. You have to remember student loans, the one debt that is socially okay for the most part, okay? It is the one debt that you are told, and wrongly so, in my opinion, you are told it is good debt. You are told that everybody takes out this debt. You are told it's okay. Go ahead and take it out. We all do it. Never mind. Okay, that we're not looking at the financial situation we're in right now and the situation that we could be in. At the time I had $85,000 of student loan, I was married. So what was a big, you know, big deal for a four or $500 a month payment? Changed drastically, however, when you become a household of one. Evans now has to pay more than six times her original loan amount. I get these every month, every month. You know, I wanna feel a value and pay my bills, but 
I'm just at a standstill. I never thought this would happen to me for almost 13 years, taking care of my mom. I didn't ask anybody for anything. But now, I pray so hard, it just looked like my prayers are not being answered. And I just don't know what to do. So something that I didn't consider, okay, and that is when you take out a student loan and you know you have, let's say it's set up for 10, 20 years or even 25 years. I mean, think about this, folks. We got student loans that are set up for 20, 25 year payments. You don't know what the future is going to look like. And this is why you hear me say all the time on this channel, do not budget future income, all right, on what you're making right now. You know, what you're making right now, don't try to predict and budget future income because you don't know what your financial situation is going to be. You just don't know. She's had this student loan. Jeez, think of everything you've gone through through the last 30 years. Were you even alive? You know, were you even alive? Depending upon you know, what age you've fallen in the, in the uh, millennial and Gen Z bracket. I can pretty much assure you she did not take out these loans with the intentions to default on them. I can even tell you that I, when I went and got my second master's degree, I already had a $45,000 student loan. Yeah, I wasn't thinking, wasn't thinking very smart. I already had a $45,000 loan for a University of Phoenix degree, which I know it's questionable whether, you know, the degree is any good. Technically it is, but still, all right. But I had a $45,000 student loan already, but I didn't stop to think why am I going back to school to get a master's to be a teacher when the district will pay for my, will uh, cover my courses? The district will pay for it. I could go on a three-year teach to earn. I could have done that. There were other alternatives. But why did I want a master's so badly? Because I wanted to be really, really skilled. And I felt that getting a master's degree would make me more skilled than if I simply went through district courses. You see, it's that type of passion and dedication that sinks us in the end. Now, I will say, it does seem that the amount was 5000 in the realm of student loans, even back for that time, all right, because like I said, I, I was 21, 5000 would not be an impossible amount to get out of. It really doesn't. But I remind you, I remind the court, that part of the problem and why student loans drag on for so long like I said, it's the one loan that we excuse. We allow it to hang around. Oh, it's okay if you can't pay this month. We'll defer it. We'll put it in forbearance, which, by the way, for those of you that are experienced with student loans, you know that when you do that, that doesn't stop the interest. So what happens is this little $5,000 loan, is maybe she needs just a little, you know, tie it over till the next, you know, couple of months, and she puts it in forbearance, and pretty soon before you know it, that forbearance and deferment, if you're not careful, you have built a new lifestyle forgetting that your student loans are around, which also makes you wonder how many, you know, with, with the student loan ramp ending in just days, folks, in just days, the student loan on ramp is inter is ending. The interest starts um, October 1st. How many people right now have student loans that worth four years ago when the student loans were stopped? Let, let's think about it. I'm showing you how she got potentially how she got into this situation. Let's think of the student loans from four years ago. And everybody was told, stop, you don't have to pay it. How many people have built a lifestyle that does not include their student loan payment? Yet, over the last four years, if they had really wanted to pay it off, they could have. This is how it happens. That's, it's for another video later, but I worry, having had my own student debt, and how impossible it was to pay off because I, I, pay, I couldn't pay it off. You, you guys, the taxpayers paid it off. But I understood that I was going to go into retirement with it. I was going to be this lady. But how many people over the last four years could have seriously tackled and paid off their student loan that were not in public service? Okay, I, I was in public service. But people who are not in public service could have done it if they had really, really wanted, you know, to really go gung-ho at it but they chose not to. And now they are staring down the barrel of a bigger student loan. It's just something to think of. This is how this lady got into it. What was once manageable, 5,000. And it really, like I said, it seems like a balance that you could pay off. Uh, you, you know, even if you're broke down and all of that, but life starts to happen and, and you find a way to, you know, give it a forbearance, a deferment, then you build your new life around it. It's one of the many ways that a student loan bill can grow. 
What I'm holding in my hand is my diploma. Evans was eventually able to earn her bachelor's and master's degrees for free at other Virginia universities thanks to the Brown v. Board of Education Scholarship Program, which was created by Virginia's legislature in 2004. It was given to students locked out of Virginia schools when districts closed to avoid court-ordered desegregation laws in the 1950s and 60s. But Evans hasn't been able to use the degrees she earned over the years because she had to become a full-time caregiver for relatives who were having health issues. Most recently, she's had a hard time finding work while helping care for her grandkids. Yet she still gets monthly student loan bills. You would think there would come a point where the student loan company would say, just give it up. But here's why the student loan company will never do that. Who is the student loan company? It's the federal government. The federal government will follow you straight to the grave. And there are people who think that if they hold on to the bill long enough, there, there, there are people who think that if they hold on to a student loan bill long enough, okay, we're talking federal loans, private's a whole different matter, but really pretty much the same rules go for private, okay? But there are people who think if they hold their federal student loan bill just long enough that eventually, you know, it'll be wiped out because after all, you've had it for so long. No, it's by the federal government. They will follow you straight into, you know, the, the, the pearly gates. This is huge mindset about go to college and make yourself better and, you know, this will be good for you and all this sort of thing. And then How many millennials have heard that? How many um, Gen Zers have heard that? Go to school, take on the debt. This is good debt. Everybody has to do this. You can't get ahead without it. Never mind that there are community colleges you could go to and then go to an in-state school, never mind there are trade schools you could go to for a quarter of what you would pay to go to a university, if not even less than that. Then people wind up in debt, huge amounts of debt, and worse off. Around 20 percent of students who enroll in Virginia colleges drop out within the first year, often with debt and earning low wages. And you still owe on the student loans as if you had gotten the degree. There are people who don't know this, and I don't fault them for not knowing it. There were things I didn't know. Jay Spear has been helping Virginians with various types of debt for 24 years at the Virginia Poverty Law Center. He says the collection tactics associated with student debt can be intimidating and overwhelming. There's actually been a pretty long history of student debt collection being much harsher than any other kind of debt collection. If your only income is Social Security, no debt collector can take your bank account or garnish your Social Security money except the federal government if you owe them for a student loan. There's another type of student debt. And also the federal, I can't remember if they say it in this report if it's just something I thought of, but the federal government doesn't have to have a court order, you know, to wage garnish you. You know, where if you owe Citibank, MasterCard, whatnot, they have to take you to court, they have to get a judgment, yada, yada. No, the federal government can just, one day you wake up and your bank account is cleared out, one day you wake up and your paycheck is, you know, cleared out, your Social Security, not literally cleared out, but, you know, the 15% or more that they owe you. Also, keep this in mind. If you, excuse me, if you are with someone who is in default on their student loan, married, married to each other or not, you're with someone who is in default on your student loan, and you share a bank account with them, just like any other creditor can do, okay, they can pull out of your joint account. In other words, if you are with someone, married or not, Okay, and that person you you have an account with is behind on their student loan or behind on any other debt for that matter. All right, the debt follows whatever bank account that person is attached to, regardless of whether there are other people attached. This is why, if you're with someone who is in who is delinquent on student loans, credit cards, car payments, whatever. There's a judgment formally by a court against them, or in the case of the federal government, they don't need a court order to have a judgment against you. They can just tap, tap, tap Mr. Bank of America and say, start withdrawing from the account. Your money is as good as as gone as the person you're in a bank account with that owes the debt. Have to be really careful when you hold joint bank account, savings accounts, whatever, you hold a joint account, uh, any sort of money account with someone
who is in debt to a creditor, to the government, it's the risk you take. Otherwise, you definitely want to keep those accounts separate that can have an equally devastating impact much earlier in life, though it's not federal student loan debt. It's debt owed directly to colleges and universities and often referred to as direct to school debt. Pretty typically, the person left college for what anyone would think is a valid reason. They were sick, their mom was sick. Somebody told me once that they were being stalked. You know, all kinds of things that I don't think anybody would fault them for leaving school. I was stalked once years ago on, um, I won't say the location, but years ago I was stopped. We're talking like in my 20s. Let me tell you, that, that is scary. They were just shocked when they came back later and tried to get their degree and found out that they either couldn't apply somewhere else because they, didn't, they weren't able to get the transcripts or they weren't going to get credit. I mean, some really fairly heartbreaking stories. A lot of students aren't aware that um, if you leave school for any reason, okay, and you don't, and you haven't paid off that bill, yeah, they, they, they can hold your transcript. I read a story once. I'll see if I can find it. I, it, it, I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Not, it, was, it was a while ago. I, I do a lot of reading on money stories, clearly, okay. And it was about a gal. She was, she had a, she, I guess she wanted to become a teacher, she had everything done, she had completed all this stuff, but she couldn't get the school to release her transcript because she owed them money still. And it literally cost her more than one teaching job. I'll see if I can dig it up. I don't know if I can find it. It was a while back. But a lot of y- young people, you need to realize that, you know, job hop not job hopping, but school hopping can be very financially unwise, all right? Because if you leave a balance with that school, that school can deny your transcript. And it's expensive taking classes twice and taking classes over again. Salona Perkins was in foster care until age 16 and was solely responsible for paying for college. She had her transcript withheld from Virginia Commonwealth University in 2019. Because Salona's GPA was just shy of the required 2.0 at the end of her third semester, VCU sent her federal financial aid back to the federal government. This is a common reason students end up with direct-to-school debt. Perkins ended up with a balance of about $9,000 directly to VCU, not to mention an additional $2,000 in collection fees. And to not have a degree. So apparently she fell just short of what you need to uh, graduate. Not being able to finish my courses at VCU did take a toll on me mentally. You have all your friends who have succeeded and you just feel left out. This may be a difficult thing for some people to have to face, but if you have a 2.0 GPA, you might not be ready for college yet. Doesn't make you a bad person, okay? But if you have a 2.0 GPA, I can kind of bet, I I may be wrong, but I can kind of bet you may have struggled in high school as well. It's just a thought. You have to drop all your courses. You have to move out. You have to move back into your parents' house. And your freedom that you once had is gone. So it did take a toll on me mentally. Not only that, I had to figure out a way how I'm going to pay $9,000 back with the jobs I go to every day. It was just a lot emotionally and mentally. I was only 1920 and I felt like I was in some sort of midlife crisis. We put on young people the stresses that even adults can't take on. I mean, I was, geez, I was in my 30s when I got my master's degree, both of them, and I, I couldn't figure out how to do it correctly. So we're asking 18 and 19 year olds to take on these type of responsibilities. This is why there needs to be an adult in the room. And even some of us adults, you know, at the time I was not qualified. I'm more than qualified to lead people now how to navigate, you know, student loans and all of that. But at the time at 34, no, I absolutely was not. All right, we're going to go ahead and fast forward this. They they talk into, they talk about Congress and all the legal stuff and that kind of, not that it bores me, but it kind of does. So we're going to, Uh, go towards the end here. We're going to pick up the story about the lady who is 76 and she's at six minutes and 45 seconds. Hold on here just a second. All right, let's take it back. Here we go. 
For Yvonne Evans, the student loans that have been hanging over her head for over 30 years still cause sleepless nights. 76 years old and she still can't put her head on a pillow and just go to sleep. This is not worth the stress of school. Nothing is worth this stress. Not even a career choice that you can't afford is worth this stress. This is 76. I have lost so much sleep with this loan. And something to remember, folks, they're taking out 15% of her Social Security disability. I think in this case, she's, she has her Social Security. 15% may not seem like a lot, but it actually is, especially the tighter your budget is. Okay, 15% for the rest of your life. And don't forget, that bill keeps going up and up and up. All right, but I think the most they can take out is 15%, at least I think once you're in your retirement years, okay? But still, just, just the whole idea, and it scares me at times. I mean, you know, I, I feel so lucky and so incredibly fortunate that, you know, I was a teacher, but come on, folks, it took me 16 years of a 10-year PSLF, Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, to get my student loan forgiven because, um, who, well, who was it, Fed Loan? was so messed up with how the system operated, it took 16 years for me to get the 10 years of qualifications. And this is why, people, you got to be careful. Do not assume that just because you're like, oh, you know what, I'm going to go take out this big student loan debt because um, it'll be cleared off in 10 years after public service. You may have to spend 12, 13, 14 years of public service to get it cleared because there may be be confusions and complications and lord knows what happens with whomever you know happens to be in the white house at the time there's a lot there are a lot more things to factor than just 10 years and don't forget that's 10 years of actively being in the job and making student loan payments it's not one or the other somebody asked um i think somebody asked me if i would walk you guys through on how to do the employer verification form you know from top to bottom um I, I'll, I'll do that i may not get to that till thanksgiving break to be honest but um yeah look for that on this channel i will walk you through maybe even sooner sooner than later okay i'll try it i'll, I'll try to push it up on the list but that's to basically sit down with you at the computer just like we're doing and i will literally walk you through the instructions of how to do the um what is it the employer verification form. If you think you'd be interested in that, let me know in the chat, okay? And it just looks like God has given me some kind of relief as to stop worrying, because I really have lost a lot of sleep worrying about this loan, and I just don't worry about it anymore. If I want to continue to, to get older, then I need to stop worrying. But Evans is not worried about her grandson. I am very, very proud of my grandson, my second grandchild, is going to college for engineering, and he wouldn't have to pay anything, nothing at all. And I am so happy about it. He's got several scholarships, and I am so proud of him. So she's going to use what she's learned about student loans and make sure that the uh, next generation doesn't get into the same trouble she was in. Folks, all we can do is live and learn from our experiences. I experiences and hopefully we can live and learn from other people's experiences as well. Once again, welcome to my new subscribers. I'm so glad you're on board. Of course, thank you so much the original 1000. All right, we are 25,000 strong and growing. I will see you guys. Don't forget Thursday night we live stream, but I'll see you guys uh, early this week, right? Have a great night, folks. My time is up and so is yours. Good night, everyone.